There was an airliner that disappeared over the Pacific 10 years ago called MH370. An individual named Ashton Forbes has popularized the notion that this footage found online about a year ago fits the time and location of the plane's disappearance. This video shows the following. There's a flash and the plane totally disappears. Recently, the country of Malaysia announced that they were going to resume search for this plane that was lost 10 years ago. The YouTube algorithm now reflects the news event. Aside from this mention of an older interview with Ashton and Clayton Morris, Ashton is almost entirely excluded from the algorithm. In a few clips in this video, we will observe what is known about the science of wormholes, looking to see if there is an effort to suppress certain concepts from public knowledge. Uploaded them, which was a random no-name account with just like a hundred followers, subscribers on YouTube, said that the video, the first video, the satellite video, was received March 12th, 2014. That's four days after the plane disappeared. This was before we even had a narrative of the plane going into the South Indian Ocean. Keep in mind, this plane's never been found even 10 years later now. So if somebody was hoaxing videos like this, how would they know we would never find the plane? This, these videos show the plane literally being surrounded by three orbs in a perfect triangle formation. It looks unnatural, um, like the way that they spin around the plane in this perfect orientation which to me screams AI or some type of quantum computer. And then they converge on the plane. You see a flash emerge that illuminates the surroundings in three dimensions, which is extremely difficult to produce with visual effects, even today. And then the plane is just gone, gone in an instant. In 0.2 seconds, the plane is no longer there anymore. I believe that this was six generational warfare. This is a message to China from the United States government saying, don't mess with us. We've got technology that is light years ahead of where conventional weaponry exists today. I think they did it because of the engineers that were on board, those freescale semiconductor engineers. People are probably familiar with the other conspiracy theory around them being patent holders. That conspiracy theory actually is not true. Those people weren't, the people in that one related to the Rothschilds were not on the plane. However, there were 20 engineers that were very important people on this plane. Eight of them were Chinese nationals. They were going to China. They worked for a US company that's connected to US aerospace and defense. So I think that we literally have teleportation capability, a wormhole that we can zap an object from one point on Earth to another. I don't know that it was advanced enough in 2014 that you could zap somebody to the moon or to Alpha Centauri or something like that, but that would be like the next level of, of taking this technology. The basis of the science of the disappearing plane relates to this concept of empty space containing an unbelievably large, immense amount of energy. The orb technology is able to remove energy from the environment to allow a generation of plasma around the plane through a type of non-ionizing electromagnetic field. Dr. Pudoff popularized the notion of energy in a vacuum of space. So-called empty space isn't really empty at all. It's actually full of energy. So instead of being like kind of a quiet empty lake, it's more like the froth at the base of a waterfall or something. And this energy is basically electromagnetic in nature. And uh, <clears throat> the energy density is uh, quite high. In fact, it's so high that when it was first discovered mathematically, it was thought to be some kind of artifact of the mathematics. But then as time went on, there were and even Nobel Prize winning experiments that showed that this energy in so-called empty space was really there. Ken Shoulder's partner was Hal, P Hal Pudoff. They both worked at SRI, Stanford Research Institute. They were partners when they were working on this exotic vacuum object technology in the late 80s. Their financier was a guy named Bill Church of Church's Chicken, the CEO, if you can believe it. And in the so this is when Hal Pudoff started writing all his scientific papers about zero point energy at the exact same time. So Hal Pudoff realized there was an ether. He started writing his papers on zero point energy. Zero point energy explains gravity as a pressure force. And in the early 90s, from Lynn McTaggart's book called The Field, she explains that the Pentagon rank they called their it was really cold fusion is what they were producing they called it condensed charge uh charge research they gave it this kind of code name and the pentagon ranked it as number three highest priorities for research so in this interview titled we discovered time travel but it's not what you think ashton forbes with clayton morris ashton explains to a degree how the wormhole science works its explanation involves a theory by an aerospace engineer named Dr. Salvatore Pais. Dr. 
Pice created what's known as the Pice effect. I queried an artificial intelligence about the Pice effect. And from that, we see that there appears to be an attempt to obfuscate information regarding this theory and to tarnish the reputation of Salvatore. The Pice effect claims in controversy. Dr. Salvatore Pice, an aerospace engineer and inventor, has proposed a theoretical concept known as the Pice effect. It involves the generation of extremely high electromagnetic energy fluxes and local energy densities, controlled motion of electrically charged matter from solid to plasma states, accelerated vibration and or spin of electrically charged systems. Pice claims this effect could lead to revolutionary applications in power generation and advanced propulsion. The U.S. Navy took interest in Pice's work including filing of several patents related to unconventional technologies and funding of experiments to test the Pice effect. However, the Navy's testing of the high energy electromagnetic field generator from October 2016 to 2019 costed around half a million dollars, but did not prove the existence of the Pice effect. The scientific community has expressed significant skepticism regarding the Pice effect. Many physicists assert that the effect has no scientific basis in reality. Critics describe Pice's work as containing invented jargon and nonsensical statements. Some experts characterize it as a classic case of pathological science. Uh, this AI sources a lot of these comments. Many of those sources are source one. And so when you click through, you get to this website, quantumgravity.wordpress, a blog. I, I looked through this and I am concerned that this might possibly be like a hit piece blog just meant to ruin the reputation of this person in light of the MH370 revelations by Ashton Forbes. But from looking through the comments, I have determined that this blog did exist before the MH370 became popular again, because there's a comment going as far back as December of 2020. The blog provides a breakdown of the cost for research with $462,000 going to salaries, meaning only 40 something thousand dollars went into materials and testing of the Pice effect. Ashton provides this explanation on how magnetic motors churn up the ether and may be a means of harnessing vacuum energy. Then what a magnetic motor is doing is it's churning up the ether. It's churning up the ether. Imagine you have a, some kind of a water mill or whatever, and it's pulling the water up from there. And you're trying to pull as much of that energy as you're kind of churning it up. You're trying to grab as much of that energy as you can grab. That's essentially what a magnetic motor is doing. And the way that it achieves the grabbing of the energy is through resonance. So a lot of this has to do with frequency and resonance because this zero point energy is constantly jiggling back and forth. And so you want to try to tap into some type of resonant frequency that can interact with that zero point energy very strongly. So a magnetic motor can do it. And a lot of these guys that were building magnetic motors, free energy devices, I think that some of them were working for sure. And that was stuff back in like the 70s, 80s, Joseph Newman, John Cyril, John Hutchinson, uh, Bendini, uh, Tom Bearden, all these guys, they all get discredited because they, everybody didn't realize that there's this energy we could tap into. In this segment, Ashton mentions talking to Salvatore Pice and hearing straight from his mouth what he thought upon seeing the video. I mean, this video of the disappearing plane. That's the Schwinger, the Schwinger limit, and that's also the Salvatore Pais effect. He said in my last interview just a couple weeks ago with him that when he first saw that video, the drone video with the orbs going around, he said, I knew what was about to happen. And I'm going, wow, you knew that there was about to be a wormhole? Because when I first watched that video, I'm going, what, what, am I, what am I looking at here? Sal saw and he said, they're building up non-ionized radiation when they're spinning around the plane. And he says, I knew what was going to happen. That's the Pais effect right there in that video. Oh, man, when I saw those orbs, I saw this thing, this one orb, just start exactly what it's doing now just start to go around this thing. And all of a sudden it started to join another one and then another one. And I said, oh my God, they're forming a bubble of non-ionizing radiation around this thing. There's no way, there's no way what's about to happen. I anticipated, do you understand? I knew before that black hole happened. Let's call it a black you hole. You knew that was going to happen beforehand? Just I knew that? that would happen. I knew that would happen. That's why really? when I said, I said, this is it. This is the Pais effect. So they're spinning so. around the plane and then we see that the flash of that wormhole and that's where the plane disappears. And the reason why we're seeing the flash is because of the Schwinger effect. When you hit the Schwinger limit, real photons get pulled right out of the ether. 
right out of the vacuum, right out of the zero point energy field. There's this energy all around us. And we think this happens at the edge of black holes as well. And at the edge of black holes, we're seeing this dynamic Casimir effect where the Schwinger limit's being breached. We're hitting the ceiling on our reality. And when you break through that, light comes out. And so we see that in the satellite video of the light shooting out like that. And this, those videos are going to prove that zero point energy is real, this etheric energy. I like to call it the ether because that's what you know Tesla, Maxwell, all these legends called it. Uh, it's probably not exactly the way they described it. It's more of a super fluid medium that is all around us all the time in a fifth dimension that's like infolded at the quantum level that we don't quite see. But that energy is there and we know experimentally it is there. And so in this video, we have the plane flashing away. I asked the AI about this image. This is a diagram from one of Dr. Pice's patents. You see a triangle with a wavy pattern around it and certain numbers like 100, 150, 200, 26. With regards to the Pice effect, what is this image depicting? This image appears to be a technical patent drawing showing a cross-sectional view of the triangle or delta wing shaped craft that implements Dr. Pice's theoretical inertial mass reduction device. The diagram illustrates several critical components, an outer resonant cavity wall labeled 100, an inner resonant cavity wall labeled 200, a resonant cavity space labeled 150 between these walls, microwave emitters labeled 300, leading portions 21 and trailing portions 22 of the craft. And so now you can appreciate here the different layers of the resonant wall and the microwave emitter here. The design shows a craft where the resonant cavity completely surrounds the vehicle, forming what's called a resonant cavity shroud this generates the high frequency electromagnetic waves throughout the cavity. This creates vibration in the outer cavity wall. It produces what Pice describes as a local polarized vacuum outside the craft, and that enables directional movement by selectively vibrating different sections of the cavity shroud. This design represents one of several patents. So in this line of thinking, these circling orbs are creating a resonant effect around the plane, the resonant effect helps with creating an electromagnetic field that excites the space around the plane up to near the swinger limit per AI. The swinger limit in the context of the Pice effect in a craft design shown refers to a critical threshold in quantum electrodynamics of approximately 1.3 times 10 to the 18th power volts per meter. This represents the theoretical field strength at which vacuum begins to break down and spontaneously produce electron-positron pairs. In Pius's theoretical work, the Schwinger limit plays a critical role because the device allegedly aims to generate electromagnetic fields approaching this limit. At these extreme field strengths, the properties of space-time itself are theoretically altered. The craft design shown attempts to create contained regions of intense electromagnetic fields that could approach but not exceed this threshold. So to me, this appears to be an issue of the strength of the electromagnetic field itself uh, being strong enough to generate electron-positron pairs within the vacuum of space. Once the appropriate environment is created around the plane, the flash of light occurs due to photons being emitted, I presume, from plasma around the plane in a fraction of a second. The photons themselves are literally being generated from the vacuum of space itself. An actual black hole is created, causing the plane to vanish. Because of the implications of such a powerful technology, we have to be especially vigilant concerning any reports we receive about the plane suddenly being found by Malaysia, as that would totally debunk the notion of the video being authentic. But we'd have to keep in mind the fact that because of the stakes, some great expense could be spared to recreate an underwater downed plane scenario to debunk the video. Hopefully the truth will come out in the end. I will cover more of this topic as facts continue to be revealed concerning it. I approach a variety of topics, including the final experiment which occurred in Antarctica. I would appreciate your subscription. Ashton Forbes is dedicated to the science on this topic. I would suggest you give him a subscription. Thanks for watching. Cheers to many profound revelations in the year 2025.